A leukemia diagnosis is devastating, and when the first steps in a treatment plan fail, patients can start to wonder what happens next. Here with some advice for patients is Dr. Michael Morrow, and we also have Karen who's living with chronic myeloid leukemia or CML. Now doctor, when someone has been diagnosed with cancer, what questions should they be asking their, their healthcare team and you know, what really does happen next? So cancer diagnosis can be pretty overwhelming, but questions are the most important thing. Questions for the healthcare team, having someone with you to answer those questions or help answer those questions, a friend, a loved one to be a navigator with you, it really helps what could be a, a winding road. Um, you, need, you need companionship and you need to be asking questions along the way. Karen's an example of someone who's living with CML. It can be done quite successfully and um, that's what we're, we're here to talk about. And Karen, when you were first diagnosed, what was the discussion like with your doctor? Um, when I was first diagnosed in August of 2005, I, I was so stunned about my diagnosis. I, you know, I was feeling fatigued, I couldn't run up hills, but I wasn't expecting the word leukemia. And, um, but it's also, I had a friend that had leukemia and it was also very hopeful because she says, if you just, if you have CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, there are medications for you. So I remained hopeful and I, but the questions came after the initial diagnosis, like, okay, where do I go from here? How often do I take my medication, the monitoring? But um, it worked out. And doctor, and I think um, anyone that has been in that situation might relate. So once you get that diagnosis, I think the first question you're asking is, is it difficult to treat CML? Um, I wouldn't say it's difficult to treat CML. It's actually um, something that a, a disease that can be quite treated uh, quite successfully. And sometimes we can even put people into a functional cure, um, allowing, allowing them to potentially get off medications ultimately. It's a relatively rare blood cancer, um, and, and these oral medications called tyrosine kinase inhibitors really have revolutionized the way we treat cancer in CML. Um, but that being said, it's not always that easy, and about a quarter of people sometimes need to change therapy, and that was Karen's experience, but um, again, it, it's quite, it can be done. All right, so when it comes to treatment failures, what really causes that when it comes to CML? It, treatment failure can come from a number of different what, directions. It could be that someone's having side effects from medication, other health problems can arise from the treatment. But more importantly, the leukemia itself sometimes is the cause and resistance can develop. The uh, medications may need to be changed and the, um, uh, you know, we're partnering with Takeda here to raise awareness about the fact that um, this is a highly treatable form of cancer and a change in treatment um, due to resistance or intolerance can turn this around. Well, thank you so much for this information, Dr. and Karen, for sharing your story. Can you tell our viewers where they can go for more information? Sure. So I'd recommend people go to LLS.org, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, to learn more about CML, how, how we treat symptoms, side effects, medications, and how the journey should look. Thank you so much for your time. And, of course, you can find this again on our website, firstcoastliving.net.